Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and happy AP review season. I know it's probably not that happy for you guys at all, but don't fret. I am here to help you guys to the best of my capability. In today's video in particular, we're going to be covering how to write an AP environmental science FRQ. So without further ado, let's just get started. First off, let's just start off with some basic info about the actual exam itself. It's two hours and 40 minutes. The FRQ section in particular is 70 minutes with three questions and they're worth 40% of your actual overall exam score. This means that on average, you'll get about 23 minutes per FRQ and within each FRQ you'll have a certain number of questions as well within that FRQ. Usually the average that I've noticed is around seven to eight but it can vary. Since there are three types of FRQs on the AP environmental science exam, I'm going to cover each one of them in this video and provide timestamps either on the screen, on the bar, or in the description down below that you guys can sit forward or back to if you guys want to reference. So the first type of FRQ is called a design and investigation question. This question will present you with an authentic environmental scenario accompanied by either a model slash visual representation or quantum quantitative data and may assess your ability to a describe and or explain environmental concepts processes and models presented in written format b analyze visual representations or data c analyze research studies that test environmental principles and d describe environmental problems and or potential responses so this is an example of what this question may look like. It's pulled from College Board's first timed practice on their YouTube channel. And as you can see, it details the carbon cycle, but it can detail any other process or can have some kind of food web or some kind of chart. It may vary depending on what question you get. For the sake of example, we'll be covering that in this video as well and I'll link it down below if you want to look at it further. If you take a look at that FRQ again, you'll notice that each question will have a task verb that it has in bold. So some will say identify, some will say describe, justify, explain, etc. And we'll be covering all of those task verbs within this video. First, let's just start off with the first question and the first task verb, which is identify. Identify is the easiest task verb slash type of question to respond to in FRQs, and you just answer the question without any further elaboration. So if A is asking us to identify a process shown in the diagram, remember it has to be shown in the diagram, that removes carbon from the atmosphere, my response would look a little something like this. A process shown in the diagram that removes carbon from the atmosphere is photosynthesis, either terrestrial or aquatic. Notice again, you don't have to explain what photosynthesis is, how photosynthesis works, you just have to say photosynthesis and make sure it's in a full and complete sentence so you get the point. With question C, we are introduced to our next task verb, which is explain. With explain, you are asked to provide information about how or why a relationship, process, pattern, position, situation, or outcome occurs, using evidence and or reasoning to support or qualify a claim. Explaining how typically requires analyzing the subject in question, whereas explaining why typically requires analysis of motivations or reasons for the relationship process, pattern, position, situation, or outcome. You may also find explain phrased as give one reason. The functions of the questions would still be exactly the same as I just previously detailed. So in question C, you are asked to explain how the rate at which fossil fuels are transferred into the atmosphere, as shown in the diagram, has altered the carbon cycle during the past 250 years. The sample response to that, given by College Board, this one I didn't write, is anthropogenic fossil fuel combustion is putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere at a faster rate than it can be removed by natural processes such as photosynthesis or fossil fuel slash limestone formation. Therefore, over the past 250 years, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has increased. Generally, with a lot of explained questions, you will be trying to prove causation, so look out for words like therefore, 
thus because they'll be very handy in your response. And if you look at the response again, it does show a causation type of relationship because the rate of which fossil fuels are being transferred is increasing quicker than can be removed by natural processes. The concentration of carbon in the atmosphere is increased, therefore altering the carbon cycle. It's that simple. But I will say that with explain, it is more lengthy than identify, which doesn't make you elaborate at all with explain. You obviously have to. So I would aim for your response to be two-ish sentences, maybe three. Normally it wouldn't be one, but yeah, round two to three sentences would be ideal for a response to an explain type question. The next task verb that you may see on an FRQ is describe. And with describe, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just need to provide the characteristics of a specific topic, and that topic may be a solution, a method, a process, etc. We can see the task verb describe in D, which is actually a double whammy because it includes identify and describe. Question D asks, first to identify an energy source in the diagram commonly used to produce electricity that also causes acid rain, and two, describe how it causes acid rain. This is one question, but it usually will account for two points because it does include identify and describe, so make sure that you're reading your questions carefully and that you respond to both of what they're asking for. The response to this would be something as follows. The combustion of fossil fuels is a common way to generate electricity. As fossil fuels are burned, sulfur dioxide is released. This would get the identify point. These sulfur dioxide emissions mix with water in the air to create sulfuric acid, which can fall down as acid rain. It's just detailing you step by step how that process works. First, sulfuric emissions mix with water in the air. Second, it creates sulfuric acid. Third, sulfuric acid goes down as acid rain, answering the question. Just detail the relevant process asked in the question and you should be good. E is also a described question, but it's slightly different because you're asked to describe a method to reduce the cause of acid rain that we just previously identified in D. In D, we identified it to be fossil fuel combustions, which we will be using in this response. These types of questions can be pretty open-ended and there can be several types of answers that will apply and get you the point. For the sake of example, let's say switching to a renewable energy source will reduce fossil fuel combustion. Now it's not enough to say switching to renewable energy sources will reduce fossil fuel combustions because this is a described question, not an identify question. If it were an identify question, you could name drop it in a full sentence and go. But since this is a described question, you have to provide more details and characteristics of why switching to renewable energy sources will reduce fossil fuel combustions. So a sample response would be switching from fossil fuels to a renewable energy source such as wind or solar would reduce acid rain as it does not produce those sulfur and nitrogen emissions. In that response, you pointed out that switching to a renewable energy source would reduce acid rain, but you also kind of explain why. Questions F through J of the simple FRQ covers experimental design questions, and because they have the same task verbs as I previously mentioned, I'm not gonna explain how to answer those questions, but I'm gonna focus on some key terms that you're going to need to study in order to pass the experimental design parts of the FRQ. First, a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a prediction that you can test in an experiment, a testable prediction. An example of hypothesis may be, if students consume caffeine, then they perform better on tests. And if then structure isn't necessary, it's just helpful, but you can just grab it completely and say, students who consume caffeine perform better on tests. And those are testable predictions that you can conduct in your experiment. The next thing that you want to know is an independent variable, which is something that you change during the experiment. So referencing the previous hypothesis that we just made, if we want to figure out if caffeine consumption correlates to a higher academic performance, we want to adjust the levels of caffeine that the student intakes. So the independent variable in that experiment would be the amount of coffee. You would adjust the amount of coffee from person to person Person, from student to student and see how they perform with one cup of coffee, with two cups of coffee, three cups of coffee, etc. The dependent variable is what is being affected by your adjustment of the independent variable. So if you adjust the amount of coffee that the student intakes, 
what is affected? Their academic performance, that's what you're trying to measure. So that would be the dependent variable. And finally, you'll have the control group, which is the standard of comparison that you'll use for other groups. So if you're measuring the effect of coffee on student academic performance, then you would also want a control group where the student has no coffee whatsoever. And this makes sure that your data is as accurate as possible. So we don't assume a false effect from the adjustment of the independent variable. Like in the sample question, you may also be given questions that ask you to describe modifications or additional variables that you may need to consider in the experiment. Besides the actual structure of the task verb that I just explained to you earlier, there's not a lot of advice I can give you for this section. Some general factors that may affect the results of experiments. I'm not talking specifically about the question in particular, but some general ones may be temperature, distance, pressure, pH, neighboring organisms, weather, it just really depends on the context of what experiment that you're given, and at least one of them is bound to apply to the experiment that you're given. So for example, temperature is definitely one that could apply to the sample question right here. The same thing with modifications, there are things that you can generally always default to, maybe like adding more experimental groups, performing the experiments at a higher temperature, at a further distance, changing the actual materials used in the experiments. If we're going back to my caffeine and academic performance example, a modification that would affect results could be the type of coffee used. Just be creative with it. There are plenty of answers that would apply and get to the point. There isn't one singular correct answer. These are pretty open-ended. So just put your thinking cap on. That's my best advice I can give you. Okay, I know that seemed like a lot for the first FRQ, but trust me, two and three, we're gonna cover a lot less because they have, again, the same task verbs that are present in one. I'm just gonna cover the ones in two and three that aren't present in one. Question two and three both ask you to analyze an environmental problem and propose a solution. The difference with question three is that it'll also require you to use calculations. Two doesn't. For question two, this is an example pulled straight from the course exam description, and it is accompanied by a graph, and the environmental problem that it focuses on is climate change. So the two task verbs that are not present in FRQ1 that are present in FRQ2 are propose and justify. With propose, they're asking you to give a solution to the problem using your prior knowledge or evidence. And propose in functionality acts the same way as identify. You just have to state a solution because it's accompanied by justify, which acts the same way as explain. With justify, you're going to use evidence to support a claim and prove how that evidence supports that claim. Again, fun same functionality as the previous explained task verb. Okay, so if you're asked to propose a solution to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, just identify a way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So for the sake of example, let's say reducing meat consumption. My response would be, one realistic solution to reduce greenhouse gas emissions is to reduce the amount of meat consumed by society. That would get the point, because I just proposed the solution. For question D2, I'm asked to justify how my proposed solution would lead to reduced gas emissions. My response would go as follows. The decomposition of manure from raising livestock produces large CO2 and methane emissions. So reducing meat consumption would also reduce the greenhouse gases emitted by that industry. Moving on to our last FRQ, which is FRQ3. This is an example of what FRQ3 may look like, and the only difference between FRQ2 and FRQ3 is that while they both will give you an environmental problem and ask you to analyze it and propose a solution, question three, again, will ask you to use some calculations. Therefore, the only task verb in FRQ3 that isn't seen in two and one is calculate. Each question and prompt will ask you to calculate different things. So there isn't a real step-by-step -step process I can give you like I gave you the word responses. What I will say is that you need to remember your units. You need to remember certain formulas. Make sure to keep a formula sheet while you're studying. You won't get to keep the formula sheet on the exam, but it's helpful to have it there 
when you're studying and memorize all the different formulas, all the different methods. When the question is asking you to calculate something, remember your units and remember to show your work. I'll leave some of the concepts that you may need to study on the screen because God knows everybody studies this last minute. So hopefully that list is helpful for you to reference from. Here are some examples of what a response to some calculation questions may look like. Again, make sure to show all of your work, show all of the units step by step. Usually you'll get a point for your actual work and your processes and the point for the actual answer. So even if you have the correct answer, you'll still lose points for not showing your work. So please remember to do that. Okay, so that wraps up my guide on the three types of questions that you'll see on the AP Environmental Science exam. I really wanna help you guys with AP exams slowly reapproaching, which is why we have a sponsor for today's video, actually, and that is Loomist AP. Loomist AP is an online learning community that provides free academic support for high school students, which is a mission I try to promote on my channel, which is also why I was really thrilled when they reached out for collaboration. They currently support a wide range of AP courses from AP Calculus AP to AP Macroeconomics. So if you're taking some of those courses, make sure to take advantage of that. They have resources such as custom problem sets, study guides, Zoom live sessions, and in the future they're looking to have cram sessions and crash courses. They even have study camps which are running right now and they have a Discord server which has different Q&A channels for you to submit all of your questions. They can be non-AP related and there are instructors so you can ask all of your questions and also interact with other students as well if you have any questions or need any help with your schoolwork. I know with the pandemic school has gotten even harder and you don't know who to reach out for help and sometimes you guys reach out to me and I'm not always available so a service like Loomis, which is absolutely free and accessible, could be really helpful for your journey in order to gain those vibes and those credits. Along with everything else that I've mentioned in this video, I'll leave a link to the Discord server down in my description below if you are interested in joining.